New model data rolling in on the potential for a newly named storm in the Atlantic to start August. Meanwhile, major changes on the way to the forecast for many in the lower 48. Welcome in, folks. Uh, great to see you on this Sunday, July 27th, and the final day of the weekend in the last weekend of July. And boy, oh boy, am I ready for fall. Uh, I don't know about uh, everyone else out there, but I'm about tired of the heat. And unfortunately, another scorcher out there today for many. Now, if you're new to the channel, Welcome. My name is Gerald. I'm a meteorologist at WCCB Charlotte. In fact, you can catch me on air tonight at 6 and uh, 10 p.m. at uh, WCCB Charlotte. If you don't live locally, you can always download our app and watch me there. Alrighty, folks, uh, I will also ask if you haven't already, go ahead and like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell for the latest notifications so you're always up to date with the always changing data and my analysis of that data. With that said, let's dive right on into things, taking a look at our satellite loop on this Sunday. And uh, we're going to take a look at a couple different areas. We're going to start here just on a wide view of the Atlantic and the eastern United States. And then uh, we'll dive into our first talking point today, which will be a wave rolling off of Africa. Now, right now, uh, you can still see where this big high pressure is. This is what's causing this big dome of heat. Uh, for many of us into the Carolinas, through much of the Deep South, and on the outside of that, you can also see this ring of fire pattern we've been tracking, still dealing with some showers and storms here from uh, St. Louis all the way over towards Philadelphia and all points in between on the outer edge of this high pressure, allowing uh, enough energy to rotate in and around to produce some shower and storm activity Meanwhile, to the south, though, it's just hot. Not a lot of rain, maybe a couple stray afternoon showers here uh, from the Carolinas down into Georgia. Uh, but otherwise, just uh, the heat really being the main story. Now, we do have a couple waves out here in the Atlantic. We've got one here into the Caribbean. We've also got another out near Central America. Uh, and then we've got this big old swirl out over the North Atlantic. All of these not expected to develop due to some dry air and wind shear uh, that is working in for many folks. But now rolling off the coast of Africa, is what could potentially try to become Dexter uh, later this week. You can see the wave, and I know the imagery is a little blurry here, uh, but we're going to use the data that we have uh, to uh, the extent that we can. And you can definitely tell uh, that's, uh, I would say, one of the more impressive waves we've seen so far this season, maybe the most impressive so far uh, in 2025, rolling off of Africa. And it's going to roll into an environment that will eventually become more favorable than it has been. Now, uh, it's not a pristine environment. It's not going to be perfect, but I definitely think uh, this has the best shot of any wave so far uh, rolling into the main development region that we've seen this hurricane season. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive on into more data regarding this potential storm. The area that this storm is about to roll into, not overly conducive for development right now. Still a cooler sea surface temperatures right off the African coastline, but you'll notice as the system continues uh, tracking westward across the Atlantic, uh, it will run into a pocket of more favorable sea surface temperatures, uh, closer to 80 or so degrees Fahrenheit, and that is more than warm enough to support a tropical system. Now, not explosive levels of sea surface temperatures out here. Uh, it's all tucked away in the Gulf right now, and obviously, the longer we go without that being tapped into, the warmer it's going to be as we go deeper into this hurricane season. Uh, but once the system gets uh, closer to the islands and gets about halfway through the Atlantic, I think the corridor for it to potentially develop is going to begin to open and uh, really that could happen anywhere from uh, east of the Antilles all the way up into the southwest Atlantic towards the Bahamas and maybe even off the southeast coastline is uh, an area that we'll need to watch this system co uh, closely for over the next 10 or so days as it starts that, uh, starts that uh, slow journey across the Atlantic. So definitely watching this one. Uh, now, I'll tell you, one of the things that's going to make it uh, more likely that this develops in some previous storms is moisture content out there. We've got a pretty good pocket of moisture associated with this storm. You can see as I move uh, the map ahead into time, this is by about a week or so from now, maybe even less than that, five to seven days. Here's the wave and bringing a lot of moisture and precipitable water with it. Uh, and that's obviously one of the key ingredients for a tropical system form uh, to form. Obviously, you know, when one moves in, it rains a lot. So if we don't have the rain component of it, uh, then we're going to kind of lose out on that latent heat release process that leads to these storms often strengthening. Now, uh, that's one uh, component here. Another one is wind shears. There are a lot of wind shear out here 
that could potentially mess with this storm and keep it from uh, developing into something. Uh, well, I'm tracking an upper level anti-cyclone, as we call it, or upper level high pressure. Uh, now, if these track right over a storm system, it can often help them develop. And we look to have one uh, in the vicinity of the system again about a week from now. So as this approaches the islands, we've got some upper level winds that could help to uh, kind of disperse or fan out this storm and help it strengthen. Now, it's going to depend where the storm is, though, and where this is. And when you're still five to seven days away, oftentimes they don't line up perfectly. So we'll need to track both of these and see uh, how it works. Some models keep the storm a little further south. That would bring it over a belt of winds that are not quite as favorable. Some models keeping it further north and tracking it right under this upper level high pressure, which would uh, help to kind of fan it out and allow it to develop a little more easily. So a lot of moving components to the forecast here. Either way, though, as you saw on satellite, a robust wave going into August with warm enough sea surface temperatures and increasing humidity values. That's something you want to watch this time of year for sure. The good news, like mentioned, we've got plenty of time to watch. It won't even get to the islands for another about five to seven days uh, and then potentially closer to the United States by about 10 or so days from now, as you'll see coming up next with the newest model runs. We'll start with a brand new GFS, and the GFS really not overly excited about this system, to be completely honest with, uh, with you. The operational run and the uh, ensemble's just not super thrilled with the chances of this developing. You can see it, though. Uh, this is by this coming Friday and Saturday. We've definitely got some spin out here. We've got that system trying to work on through. Not overly strong, and what happens is the GFS keeps it further south, has some stronger upper-level winds because of that, and uh, this gets into the Caribbean where it just kind of dies out and I say dies it doesn't really ever form into anything in the first place now to the north of there though about a week from now the GFS is loading up storm after storm after storm uh, along the eastern seaboard we're going to talk about that at the end of the video actually uh, so uh, stay tuned throughout the video we'll get there in a moment but right now I'm going to focus on this African wave that's the GFS. Like I said, not super exciting. The Canadian model, also brand new from this afternoon. Uh, you can see the storm system here. We've got this area of red indicating spin out there in the lower levels by this coming Friday and Saturday, same time frame, approaching the islands a little bit further north on the Canadian. And because of that, the system's a little bit more compact, slightly less wind shear, and uh, tries to form here, just kind of rides the northern edge of these islands and uh, eventually gets to uh, the Bahamas by about 10 days from now and near the coast of Florida as uh, a pretty weak system, probably tropical depression, maybe a tropical storm on that model run. Uh, the European model, also um, the latest run that we have of this one, uh, kind of an in-between route, not overly strong, but takes a track closer to the Canadian. Here it is, uh, that open wave, still not really much of a storm even out of it, but as it gets later out into time and closer to about 10 or so days from now works in that same general vicinity towards the Bahamas and generally speaking in the direction of Florida. Let me show you one more model run. This is the European AI model, uh, and this one has been a lot more aggressive with the system. Now, it takes that further north track like the European and the Canadian, uh, keeps it weak for a while, but as we go to about seven to 10 days from now, you can see it starting to develop, hits a pocket of more favorable conditions, and uh, eventually gets this into a tropical storm, brings it into the northern Bahamas and towards southern Florida, and even tries to sneak it into the Gulf in around that 10-day time frame. So definitely something to watch right now. The model's not free freaking out over this one, not saying that we need to prepare for uh, the end of times or anything like that, but if we take a look at the European Ensemble members, uh, you can definitely see the general idea here. This starts to get going somewhere out into the Atlantic, takes a track uh, north of what the GFS shows, keeps it out of the Caribbean where it would likely get uh, ripped apart by wind shear, uh, gets it up into the southern and southwestern Atlantic towards the Bahamas, and a lot of the models wait to strengthen it until it's in that general vicinity of the Bahamas. Some models uh, try to move it back towards Florida, some try to pull it up the coast, Plenty of time to watch it, but uh, really not much has changed on the thinking for the storm since we talked yesterday. Just got to kind of wait for it to get over the ocean to start this week and see what it does is, what's, uh, is what it's going to boil down to. So uh, that's the latest on the African wave. Now let's talk about the heat, the humidity, the relief from it, and how that relief, funnily enough, could also spark uh, a system out in the tropics. Heat advisories, excessive heat warnings, yeah, plenty of alerts here on the map involving how hot it is out there, and hopefully this is the worst heat wave of the year, and honestly, it really can't get much worse than this. In Charlotte, we broke a record high yesterday with 101 degrees. 
Uh, that's only the second time this year we've hit triple digits, and I think only like the fifth time or so, and maybe the sixth or seventh in the past decade that Charlotte has hit triple digits. So this one's the real deal. Uh, this is not your average summer heat uh, for uh, for a lot of folks out there, and you can see that's why we have all these boxes. Now, still seeing higher in rain chances, like I said, on the northern side of this high pressure. Places like Indiana, Ohio, uh, West Virginia, in through the Mason-Dixon area, uh, up into uh, the DMV region, and then even up into the northeast, seeing a pretty good uh, amount of showers out there helping to keep things a little bit more tame uh, from the heat. But down south in the Carolinas, we've got a little bit of popcorn showing up, uh, but uh, even then not overly impressed with uh, how much rain is currently falling there across portions of the Carolinas. Now, what's causing this and how much longer does it have to go before we find some relief? Well, it's this big mid-level ridge. Uh, this is just a big dome of heat, basically. It's this big circle you see here, this contour, and we've got that flow around it. That's the ring of fire that's been bringing the rain up through the Ohio Valley, the Midwest, into the Northern Plains, and into portions of the Northeast. If you're under this, though, just a stray afternoon storm. They pop up, uh, they kind of get smacked back down by the atmosphere, and that can lead to gusty winds and a quick burst of lightning and heavy rain, but not long-lasting storms in a pattern like this. Now, like I mentioned, though, uh, relief is going to be on the way for many of us. You can see that here in our temperature anomalies, the orange being above average uh, and uh, the blue being below average. Now, this is a little bit above the surface, not quite at the surface, but does a good job at showing this frontal system work through. Here's by Tuesday into Wednesday. You can see that blue moving south out of Canada. And by this coming weekend, it looks a lot more tame out there. Now, not necessarily cool. It's probably not going to feel like fall for many of us, but compared to what we're dealing with now, it's going to be a very noticeable cool cool down once this blue works on in and almost even gets a little bit of a hybrid cold air damming setup. You can see this little uh, high pressure here uh, bringing in some of that cooler dry air down into the Carolinas uh, and we could use it and it's been very hot here for sure so we'll take any sort of relief that we can get. Uh, now, uh, this could also bring some rain with it as well. You can see that here. Uh, we've got uh, this system working on through, and you can see these pockets of rain, and eventually, by the time we get to about, uh, this is Wednesday, uh, here's the system. Here's the front uh, kind of draped across the United States, and uh, definitely firing up more showers and storms, some of which could become strong to severe, so we'll need to watch out for some of that uh, and really some of the same places that have already gotten it before continuing to move southward. Uh, here we go by Thursday afternoon. Again, a pretty rainy-looking pattern here across the Ohio Valley as this front sneaks on through and eventually by Friday it looks to get down into the Carolinas, Tennessee, Georgia, Alabama, uh, into Mississippi as well and by Saturday the forecast gets a little bit more tricky on what's going to happen. Some models keep that heavy rain almost a cold air damming day. That means temperatures could uh, not even hit 90 for a lot of us down into portions of the Carolinas, uh, Tennessee, the areas around there. We'll see how the models evolve on that but uh, definitely something we'll be watching and keeping you updated on. Now let's go to take a look exactly how hot it's going to get the next couple of days and uh, how this relief once again could spark more tropical trouble off the southeast coastline. Here's another way to view that front coming through, and honestly, this might be one of the more uh, important maps when discussing it. The dew point or the muggy meter, uh, whatever you prefer calling it, very hot, very muggy for a lot of us right now. Here comes the front, though, by the middle of the week, and uh, check it out. This is Friday afternoon. If you're north of the Ohio Valley, especially the interior northeast or eastern Canada, uh, yeah, it might actually feel a little bit more like fall for you. In fact, uh, just because we haven't done this in a while, let's take a little sounding up here in the Adirondacks and see what you're working with. Uh, yeah, in the afternoon. 66 degrees, no humidity. Yeah, that is a nice uh, day to start off August, if you ask me. And unfortunately, not quite the same for everybody. Though. Notice these dew points hang on. Now, there's still some fighting going on in the models here. Some of them get this dry air all the way down into the Carolinas, especially the upstate and the western Carolinas. Uh, some of them don't really get it there. So again, a lot to figure out here. But either way, what this means is it's going to be hot until then. <laughs> so for tomorrow, another day up in the triple digits into the Piedmont of the Carolinas, triple digits into Kansas, Nebraska, uh, and then 90 for just about everybody else. We'll go ahead and take a look at your Tuesday. Uh, yeah, more of the same. You can see on the map here, high temperatures uh, right around what they should be, uh, for example, a little bit above what they should be this time of year. Let's take even further ahead into time. This is by Thursday. Notice how things start to change drastically. That front drapes down, only highs in the 70s uh, for a lot of folks uh, kind of north of the Ohio Valley there, as mentioned earlier, and then uh, getting some 80s up there into uh, portions of the Northeast. Still hot, mid to upper 90s down south. 
Potentially though, again, we'll see what the models decide on here, but about a week from now, next weekend, highs only in the 80s in Charlotte and surrounding areas. And uh, only uh, upper 70s and 80s through the I-95, 70s and 80s north of the Ohio Valley. Much nicer uh, kind of start to August here than it looks like we're going to end out July with. Now, how could this spark tropical trouble? Well, uh, here's the big storm system that's going to bring the front, the core of it, all the way up into Canada. And that's typical this time of year. This is where the cold air and warm air are still fighting it out a little bit. But this boundary to the south of it that it's going to create is going to get uh, dragged across the Atlantic. And that over warm ocean temperatures could try to spark up some tropical development. And uh, here we go in the GFS by about 10 days from now. It's got one system here trying to get going, another one off the southeast coastline. And we'll need to watch that. Now, generally speaking, odds are these will get pulled out to sea, but there are times some of them can, can uh, excuse me, can kind of get trapped under some sort of ridge and just kind of linger across the southeast coastline, maybe get thrown back into it. Uh, depending on how big the boundary is, this could develop all the way just over the southeast coastline and bring uh, heavy rainfall for some of us. So that'll be something to watch. Uh, and uh, again, we'll see what the models decide on, but uh, a tricky forecast for about seven or so days out from now for portions of the southeast. Either way, though, watching the tropics, watching the heat wave, and uh, all praying that we can get to that relief on the way right around the corner after a couple more days of, uh, to be quite frank, hell on earth is what it's feeling like out there. All righty, folks, that's all I got for you on this Sunday. Again, you can catch me on air tonight uh, in Charlotte. Again, you can always download the WCCB Charlotte app to watch me there if you're not local. And uh, don't forget to follow me on social media for the latest updates. Y'all have a great one. Stay safe, and I'll see you all tonight.